Welcome to Western Wisconsin Journal. Uh, I like to promote the arts, as you know, and I'm Bobby Pominville. And today I'm promoting a book from a local author, Gary Porter. Welcome to the show, Gary. Thank you, Bobby. I appreciate this opportunity to talk about Duffy. And, and I'm a dog lover and a very much promoter of reading. So uh, as I have learned to know a little bit more about this book, I've been so impressed. It's a delightful book, and I think our audience is really going to enjoy learning about it. Terrific. So let's start out with uh, what inspired you to start writing books. Well, Bobby, I've always enjoyed writing uh, from as long back as I can remember, uh, and I actually started writing textbooks. I was an accounting professor oh, for yes. over 30 years, uh, taught at a number of universities around the country, and midway through my career, I began writing textbooks. And I think of textbooks as a way to explain important topics to students in a way that they can understand. So uh, that was my initial uh, kind of endeavor in writing was with the textbooks. And uh, from there, I found that I had more creative ideas that I wanted to express. And so uh, I saw that as a natural extension. Sometimes people ask the question, well, you know, the connection between writing academic types of books and creative writing, and I don't view them as that much different. In, in fact, I think uh, you're still trying to explain something to somebody in a, in a creative book of this sort. You're trying to express an idea to them, and that's mm -hmm. exactly uh, what I tried to do. In addition to the um, textbooks, when I got into the creative writing, I started writing essays, and I wrote a number of essays for my uh, hometown newspaper back in Iowa, where I came from, a small oh. town in southwest Iowa, and uh, I wrote a number of essays for them. Eventually, actually after the Duffy book was out, I uh, wrote an essay about my hometown that was part of the River Falls, oh. Wisconsin uh, Community Reads program, and I was thrilled to uh, win first place in that contest. So that's, uh, that's something that uh, I've enjoyed doing is the creative writing. Oh, I think that's such a, a great thing to, to combine those two areas. And the power of writing a book, I can't imagine getting the inspiration for that. But I think you knew Duffy, and, and Duffy was your dog. Yes, he was. So that must have really inspired you. Well, it did. and. Uh, what really brought this book about was Duffy was our first adopted dog. Uh, my wife and I do not have children of the two-legged variety, only the <laughs> four-legged variety. And we started adopting dogs uh, quite a few years back, and our first adopted dog was Duffy. He was from a shelter outside of Chicago where we lived at the time, mm -hmm. and uh, he became, as you know, being a dog lover, a part of our family. Oh. And he was a... Uh, uh, our kid, so to speak, and he lived with us, traveled with us, moved with us, and we had him for 14 years. Uh, he went everywhere with us. He never flew. He was never on an airplane. But other than that, uh, he was in the back seat with us everywhere <laughs> we went. And so uh, he lived with us, as I said, for 14 years. He made the move when we left the Chicago area, I took a position at a school in Montana, and he moved out there with us to Montana and had some exciting experiences, which I write about with the wildlife oh, yes. in Montana with the elk and the coyotes, oh, and uh, he came face to face with some. So uh, he said he, he came back to this area then. When we moved back uh, to the Midwest, mm -hmm. we located, I took a job at a university here in the Twin Cities. Oh, yeah. And he came back here with us, lived with us for uh, the last few months of his life here in Hudson oh. before he uh, passed on. So that's yeah. where the inspiration came from for oh. the Duffy book. I think that's just a wonderful tribute. And, you know, the terrier breed, they are so, so interesting, so delightful. So I can imagine the wildlife. They're, yes. They're very uh, self-assured, and I'm sure he had a wonderful time with that. Well, as Duffy explains in the book, and I will talk maybe in a bit about yes. him uh, using his voice to write this book, but uh, oh, yeah. as he explains, uh, terrier comes from terra, which means in Latin, earth dog. And he was <laughs> an earth dog. His nose was always buried uh, yes. in the holes. And I can remember when we first moved out to Montana, 
the very first time we took him out for a run, he discovered uh, a den of coyote pups oh, alongside no. the road. And uh, he found out that the mother coyote uh, was going to be very protective and kept oh, us dear. at a distance from uh, her little pups, her coyote Certainly. pups. So, but again, terrier, terra, earth dog, he explored everything. And as you may know from being a dog lover as well, uh, mm -hmm. they all have their personalities. And he had a very distinctive personality, which frankly made it relatively easy for me to write his story in his voice because I had such a feel after all of those years of oh. what his personality was really like. Yes, yes. And the quotes in the book and the way you've described what happened to him and, you know, the way you've written about how he thinks, mm -hmm. I found that just endearing. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I made a decision early on that I was going to write the uh, book from his point of view using yes. his voice. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just back up maybe a little bit of the background. Sure. When you lose a dog, as, as we all know, it's a very traumatic experience, especially when they're, uh, as we call it, as our kid, as our, as our only son. Mm -hmm. And when we lost him shortly after moving here to Hudson, I started just thinking about his life. And as I think a lot of people do this, whether it's a loss of, uh, of a human friend or a relative or whether it's a, yeah. a family pet, you find that therapeutic value in, in writing things down. And oh. so shortly after we'd lost him, within weeks, uh, my wife Melissa had given me a uh, journal. And this, that seemed appropriate, by the way, from yes. an accounting professor to be writing in a journal and making journal yes. entries. But I uh, started keeping a journal. She got this from the Three Dog Bakery, of all places. <laughs> and there are entries in here that I made very early on after we'd lost him. Just yeah talking about what it was like to lose this, uh, this dear member of your family and he said about the various experiences he had. We're runners, so we talked about, uh, I jotted down the various running events he used to go to with mm. us and uh, all the various uh, activities and so forth. And frankly, as you can well imagine, I found it cathartic. I found it a very uh, healing sort of a process to write about him. Mm -hmm. Well, before long, Duffy lived a suburban life, and I thought, he's got to have some more adventures besides just meeting face-to-face -face with the coyote, uh, <laughs> some of the other neat things that he did with yes. us. There needs to be another element to this story, mm -hmm. and this is when I started, uh, as I like to explain, especially to the kids, mixing fact with fiction. So uh, if we're going to talk about a dog in his voice, and by the way, going off to heaven right at the beginning, right. then it's obviously got this fictional element to it. So mm -hmm. it was uh, a real mixing of, uh, of fact and fiction. I can talk a little bit more uh, as we go along uh, about how he starts out and, uh, mm -hmm. and who he meets when he goes off to heaven. Oh, and I've read excerpts, and I and a little bit later, I'm going to ask you to read one. Be happy to. But uh, I was just wondering, what was the most uh, surprising outcome from writing this book? Well, I have to say that uh, the most surprising outcome was the reaction from the young kids in in the elementary oh, yes. schools. Uh, that's As my wife, who's also the publicist, she spent her uh, career with IBM in sales and marketing uh -huh. uh, for 32 years, and uh, she has been the driving force behind all of the marketing and the publicity for Duffy. And, uh, and what she likes to tell people is that Duffy's story is really one for dog lovers of all ages, as she says, from 8 to 80, uh, whatever yes. ages. Well, when you say, what was the most surprising uh, outcome of, of the book since it's been out uh, uh, about a year and a half now, uh, I'd have to say the reaction from the kids. Now I have a feeling that some of that was just for me having been a teacher all the years that I was, that I right. taught in the classroom. It was at the college level, but a teacher's a teacher, right? As that's you well know. That's true, and you never lose that love of teaching. That's right, and, uh, <laughs> and ha as you having been one yourself can appreciate yeah. that uh, you're teaching in whatever you do, whether it's talking with someone, whether you're tutoring, whether you're writing a book, textbook, or a creative book of this sort. Um, y you're trying to uh, educate somebody about something. That's so right. in terms of the, uh, the surprise that came, it was when we started working with the elementary schools, and particularly with the Prairie Elementary here in Hudson. Uh, 
Uh, one of our neighbors, uh, Mrs. Derrick, uh, taught at the Prairie Elementary School in the third mm -hmm. grade and invited us last year, very shortly after the book came out, mm -hmm. to come in and talk with not only the third graders but also the fourth and fifth graders oh, about yes. the uh, about the book and the process of writing a book. Mm -hmm. And what they do in this school, and I'm sure a lot of the schools around Wisconsin, mm -hmm. is they have a writer's workshop where they have to essentially write their own personal narratives and talk about uh, themselves in a story. Well, little did I know that this is exactly what I was doing with Duffy. If I could give you a little bit of the background, yes, uh, as you found out please. in the first chapter, Duffy goes off to heaven yeah. right away. As I say, we get that out of the way. We don't have to <laughs> wait all the way through the book to find out if he's going to die. Uh, I started the book that way with him uh, uh, his last day on earth and then going off to heaven and he gets up there and he feels now all of a sudden sad and grieving but also feeling like he ought to try and get his story back to his parents and let them know yes. that he arrived safely and that he's okay. Well what happens right away? He meets Rex and Rex is a Boston Terrier and I had this notion right at the beginning it hit me as sometimes these things do Rex is a Boston Terrier, so being from out east, he's quite literary. And so <laughs> the idea I, I, was, I hit on uh, early on in this uh, part of the mm -hmm. book was, well, Rex ought to be his agent. He ought to be the one that helps him figure out how to get this book back to Earth. And when I read a little bit from chapter one uh, towards the end here, uh, it, you'll see that uh, notion of how the two of them mm -hmm. scheme and go about figuring out wh how they're going to write this. And what I found is that the, uh, the students in the elementary school are going through the same process of figuring out the genre. Is it going to be a personal narrative or a autobiography? And they're learning about the various literary devices that mm -hmm. Duff and Rex talk about, about how you can use alliteration <laughs> and how you can use homophones uh, to mm -hmm. spice up your writing and all what they call their toolkit. Uh, in the writer's workshop. So that's perfect for that age. It really was. It and is. It's, it's really worked out very well. We've had just incredible uh, uh, response from uh, school kids. That's wonderful. So um, that's, that's just a wonderful outcome and I didn't know if you wanted to mention but the children even wrote you some thank yous. They did. And that I, is just wonderful when you get comments from children. Well, and I know you appreciate this. I showed you this to you uh, prior to coming on. Uh, and being a teacher yourself, it, yes. it has to be the, the, uh, the most touching experience I've had since the really? book has been out. I've, I've talked with pet lovers of all ages who've lost their pets and oh, uh, yeah. uh, people that come into the bookstores and libraries. But when the students presented me with oh, this uh, so copy wonderful. of their their reflections. They, each of them uh, drew some pictures and then wrote some things mm -hmm. about the book itself and about their reaction to reading about Duffy. Uh, they gave this to my wife and I after we'd been there for the workshop and uh, this is a treasure and it's probably like I said the most touching moment I've had since the, uh, the book was written. Well not only that but they're so sincere and their comments are really so right on and and then the thought that you really help teach them to go a little further with reading and writing yes yeah, and you know when people can express themselves in writing that's that's a tough thing for a lot of people it really is and to feel as if you've had some influence and touch them that's in wonderful the process of doing this I said it's it's meant a lot to me I have to say that that had to be one of the best experiences for you too. Absolutely, it really because was. Because they really, I know how children are, they just love anyone that comes to visit. That's right. Well you know and it's it's interesting too when you talk about what's what surprised you or or things that happen uh, when you write a book mm -hmm. in, in uh, it's something that came, this was very early in the process, but something that just happened the other day, you hand out a bookmark, or I should say m my wife Melissa hands out a bookmark at right. one of these events. It happened to be out at a Petapalooza here in Roberts just a few weeks ago, oh. and she gave a bookmark to somebody 
Uh, so happened that person works in the Hudson Post Office. She read the book, passed it on to another person in the post office who happens to be our, our mail carrier. Well, just a few days ago, <laughs> the mail carrier comes by with the nicest uh, thank you note, essentially, yes. written by both her and her friend in the post office, telling me just how much oh they enjoyed the book. And kind of the, both sides there, the kids as well as adults. Mm -hmm. I, I've said this to Melissa a number of times, to have someone come up to you in, in either form, in the kids with this uh, mm -hmm. spiral-bound book or this note card, uh, that is really what makes writing a book of this sort uh, well, worth the pro worth the whole process. And and what you've done is you've written something that appeals to so many ages and so many people. And I just, I know I'm inspired to read the rest of it at this point. I've just read excerpts myself. Well, I, but that first chapter is just, it just spoke to me. It's so delightful. Thank so, you. Yeah, great job, Gary. Well, what happens, I should just maybe expound a little bit on this mm -hmm. story. They, uh, they start out in heaven in chapter one, and they talk, as I'm going to read about uh, mm -hmm. a little bit, uh, about how they're going to go about this and what kind of a story it ought to be. Mm -hmm. And then, pretty much, Rex says, I'll take care of figuring out how to get this book published and talk to some people down on earth. You go off and write your story. So a lot of the chapters from then on out, Bobby, are essentially Duffy telling his story of his time on earth with, as he called them, his folks, Melissa right. and I. And so he tells his story. Every few chapters then, there's an interjection. There's a chapter from heaven, and those are updates. Those are where Duffy then kind of reports in, in his voice, how him and Rex are coming along. And as I've talked to the students about, there have to be, if you're going to write a story and hold the reader's interest, there have to be some ups and downs, some times when you're not really sure how things are going to turn out. So this story within the story of, gee, uh, are we ever going to get this book published is, is another uh, part of this that is, is intended is on my part to hold the reader's interest and keep them right. guessing as to what's going to happen uh, towards that's the perfect, end. That's perfect because we don't know the answer. We don't know till we... got to find out. That's right. I like that a lot. And as a little sidebar, did you have trouble getting your book published? This book. This book. Publishing a book is, is always a challenge. I think any author you talk to will tell you that uh, the process of, uh, of writing the book is one thing. Because a lot of times get that question of, uh, it, it comes up almost invariably in the 50 or 60 some events that we've had with the book over the last year and a half. Invariably, uh, and we chuckle about it, Melissa and I, the question always comes up, how long did it take you to write this book? And it's a fair question, but it's not an easy question because there was a time of, as I'll say, composing the book and figuring out Rex is going to be part of this and uh, mm -hmm. here's the story within the story. But mm -hmm. there's also that whole, as I talk with the students about, the process of uh, getting it published, truly getting it published yes. uh, uh, here on earth. And, uh, uh, and there is that, that part to it, finding a publisher mm -hmm. and eventually uh, going through an editing process. Mm -hmm. And this book has, at the start of each chapter, uh, some illustrations. So I worked with both an illustrator and a designer. Oh, yes, right. And uh, the, I'm, as I tell people, I am not an artist. I, I'm a writer and I feel that's, that's part of art. But uh, what I did was I wrote a caption to uh, start off, to, as I referred to it when I talked with the uh, illustrator, to capture the spirit of right. each of the chapters. And so I have a short caption that starts off each one. Mm -hmm. And then it was up to the illustrator to match that up, to, to draw something right. lighthearted. It's a relatively humorous book is, oh, yes. is its intent uh, as told by a dog. And so um, it was up to the illustrator then to capture the spirit of that. So there's that part uh, of, of getting a book published, of working with a designer, working with an illustrator, the editor, and it right. takes time. Oh, yes, and the, I think the illustrations are really uh, enhance the book Thank a you lot. I like much. it. Very nice, and I, it's kind of interesting to hear you talk about that. So do you want to go to the excerpt now? 
I can talk, yeah, I can read a little bit. Would from you the, like to um, just introduce it to sure. us a little bit? And yeah. We'll hear a little bit of the book. Absolutely. Well, as I said, Duffy uh, gets to heaven after uh, his uh, journey up there. He, he dies at the very outset of the book and goes off to heaven, and he meets this Boston Terrier Rex who comes trotting down the road. This is all in the writer's mind. He pictures things, yeah. and he says, here comes Rex trotting down the road. Duffy's feeling a little down. Uh, also confused where he's at. Uh, so he meets Rex, and uh, Rex can tell Duffy is, is kind of down about just leaving these people he spent the last 14 years with. Mm -hmm. And so uh, after Duff explains that he'd like to get his story back to Earth, uh, uh, Rex starts questioning him, and he starts asking a lot of questions. Duff gets a little bit Oh, I don't know if you say irritated at first, well, all these mm -hmm. in interrogation almost. Why are you actually asking me all these questions? And Rex says, well, your, your readers are going to need to know what kind of story is this going to be. Duff explains, well, it's my life story. That's what it is. Because at this point, yeah. Duff, he knows nothing about autobiographies, memoirs, and all these <laughs> things Rex being from out east knows about. So Rex starts talking to him about uh, the various genres, which, as I said, these elementary school kids know all about. So uh, before long, uh, Rex decides, no, you know, I don't know if this can be an autobiography. I normally think of those as written by famous people, jet setters, <laughs> ex-presidents, that sort of thing. Okay, Duff says, that's fine. We won't go with autobiography. Well, uh, I've heard about memoirs. Would maybe my story be a memoir? And Rex says, well, it could be, but, you know, you got to be careful of memoirs. There's been a lot of talk recently how... People write these, and then they're on these talk shows, and mm -hmm. and they they kind of get nailed down to this really happen or not happen, oh. and you know you, you don't get any hot water duff here. So, no, I don't think we want to call it a memoir. So that's kind of the setup, Bobby, to a little couple pages I'm going to read here okay. because they're trying to decide, and at this point, Duff's really got to rely on Rex as the expert in this, and uh, yeah. so this is a, a short passage in the chapter on heaven in which they're having this discussion mm -hmm. and it starts off and this is all Duff's voice uh, uh, with uh, him and Rex having a conversation. Mm -hmm. Well for the longest time Rex said nothing. He walked around with that bullet head of his down obviously deep in thought. When he finally looked up those beady eyes fixed on me and out it came. I've got to, we'll call it a tale. Mm -hmm. A tale is a story, an account, a yarn. This way we don't have to get all hung up on how much is true and how much is bogus. It's simply going to be one dog laying out a good story about something. You know, Duff, the way Mark Twain told the stories of Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn. And how much better could it get? Here's a dog telling a tale, and what do all dogs have? We all have tails. <laughs> Not wanting to burst his bubble, I hesitated more for responding to what Rex obviously considered a brilliant idea he just had. But hadn't he inspected me closely when we first met? You know, the way dogs do. I'd yet to meet another of my species who didn't pay particularly close attention to the back end of every dog they met, sniffing away until they were sure this one was to be trusted. Had Rex not observed that all I had was a stub, not a real tail? Uh, Rex, I don't know if you really noticed, but when it comes to the posterior, I got the proverbial short end of the stick or shall we say short end of the tail. Without even hesitating or coming up for air, Rex blurted out, Perfect! Don't you see the irony, old chap? A dog without much of the one thing we all have, a tail, and here he is telling his tale. You know, readers just love writers who can alliterate. So we will call your masterpiece very simply, Duffy the Tail of a Terrier. Well, I looked at him. But how did you know my mama delivered eight of us little terriers, Rex? I had no clue of the number of offspring, and I'm afraid you've lost me, old chap. So I replied to Rex, You know, Rex, a litter of eight. You said readers liking writers from a litter of eight, and that was the exact number of us siblings, including yours truly. Well, Rex gave me a look like I'd just popped in from another planet, which is, of course, precisely what I just did. But ever the tactful one, I drew a long breath and tried to explain to him. Oh, I now see the source of confusion, Duff. I said readers can alliterate. 
not those who came from a litter of rate. You see, logical as it might seem to alliterate has nothing to do with litters, Duff, or for that matter, the numeral eight. It means using words in a sentence that have the same initial sound. Tail of a terrier has just that sound. Wouldn't you say, Duff? Well, to illustrate for my tutor, Rex, that I grasped this wonderful notion of alliteration, I felt like blurting out that I was an embarrassed imbecile, but I decided not to belabor <laughs> the point. So then they go on, Bobby, they go on to kind of nail down a few other things, but they did come up with this idea of the subtitle, oh, yeah. The Tale of a Terrier. I and like just it. to come back to the, the kids, as I said, they learned about homophones in their writing workshop. Well, oh. tail and tail. So Perfect. they they had to distinguish those two. And we talked, I remember at the workshop, I talked with them about all sorts of other homophones. They love giving their examples of them yeah. and so forth. And then we talked about that alliteration, that idea of tail and terrier starting out the same. That's, that's just amazing how you wove that all in. And then I've noticed you've done a lot of that where you do a little play on words. Yes. And from the dog's viewpoint, it really does make sense. Mm -hmm. It really is, is fun to read with all that in there. So I like that you've done that. Thank you. Thank you. It was fun writing. I have to tell you that the play on words uh, in writing in a dog's <laughs> voice is a challenge on the one hand. But uh, you know fun. what? The reader has to look at it and understand from the beginning, which they do, obviously, mm -hmm. that this is a dog talking. And, uh, mm -hmm. and there's some human characteristics that come through. But also, I think most people who read it truly feel as if this is probably what my dog's thinking a lot of the time. Yeah, and you know, that's the way I was kind of interpreting it, too, was I was thinking, well, what would the dog be thinking? That's right. And then, you know, those of us that are dog lovers and owners, we're always trying to figure out what they want. And they give us all these clues. And it, it was just tapping right into that part of me that, oh, that's mm -hmm. like my dog. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so that is just wonderful, the way you've written that. Thank you. So enjoyable. Um, now, I was going to ask you where we could find your book. Well, there's a lot of places uh, that it's available. Uh, before we talk about that specifically, and it'll kind of lead into that because uh, mm -hmm. it's tied to it uh, in terms of where we're going to be because wherever we're at, you'll find the book as well. Yes. Uh, uh, we're going to be a couple places here in Hudson okay. oh, uh, right during the month of November coming up, in fact, next week. Uh, the Phipps will be having their Gift by the Hand show yes. uh, for their artists uh, starting next Friday, November 9th. And uh, oh, this will be the second year that we will have Duffy available in the gift shop. And Melissa Hi. and I will be in there uh, also vo volunteering and helping out. And just as an aside, uh, I want to mention the FIPS mm -hmm. because I know you've done programs with the FIPS yes. and, and yes. been a promoter of them. And I have to say uh, they've been a real friend of Duffy. I actually oh. uh, have done a lot of the writing of Duffy at the FIPS. I, uh, use space there and oh. actually uh, come did come in very regularly and do my creative writing there and so uh, oh much when we talked all the way at the beginning of the segment about the inspiration uh, just being around the FIPS itself is an inspiration as I think any of the artists that you've talked to uh, oh, yes. can attest to so uh, I've kind of been uh, as we like to say the the writer in residence there so to speak and That's so wonderful Full. And they've taken it on and they're promoting you and I love to promote the FIPS on this show. It's a wonderful place. We, we call it the gem on the river here in Hudson. Yes, it's just it is. A, for a, a community of our size a wonderful Great. place. So in addition uh, to the FIPS in November, again starting a week from tomorrow on the 9th, yes. we're also going to be at Chapter 2 Books. Uh, yes, we, we, right down on Main Street. That's right, uh -huh. right down Main Street. Uh, we will be there uh, uh, tied in with the home tour this year. We've done various events oh, in the yes. past when uh, when the Spirit of St. Croix days, we did a right. book signing, and this one is in conjunction with the weekend of the home tour, uh, oh, November perfect. 17th, uh, Saturday, oh, November Oh, we have 17th. so many people going through at that time. 
it should be a good turnout, and we're looking Great. forward to it. We'll be there that day from uh, 10 to noon in the morning. Okay. And, uh, uh, obviously, books available uh, uh -huh. uh, for signing and uh, right. talking with uh, people who come in. I have to say that in terms of another gem, uh, mm -hmm. that bookstore uh, opened up uh, very shortly after Duffy came out in oh, print. Oh, yes. And so it's been an incredible partnership to work with them mm -hmm. at Chapter 2 and, uh, and help promote uh, Duffy. So those are two events coming Great. up in the month of November. Uh -huh. And then uh, Melissa has us booked in a number of events uh, during the month of December as we get ready That's for the good. holidays as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Valley Bookseller in Stillwater. We're, right. we're going to be mm -hmm. up there uh, doing a book signing in November. Uh, UWRF down our friends in River Falls at yes. the campus has a monthly book club and oh. they have uh, chosen Duffy as the selection for the month of December. Oh, and so wonderful. I'm going to uh, not only come as the author of the book, but also as the moderator for the book club that month. Mm. And so we'll be down at UWRF and then mm -hmm. uh, also at the, uh, uh, the Hazel uh, Mackin Library in Roberts. Oh, uh, okay. Coming out to Roberts for their holiday open house. In December so and Perfect. then of course people can check the uh, the website for events uh, because we uh, add them all the time we're always adding events oh, okay so. okay and what is that website that website uh, and this is also of course uh, Bobby uh, where people can easily go on and, mm -hmm. and find a copy of the book to order our right. website is very easy, DuffyTheDog.com yes uh, yes no space it's very in easy there. to go to it I've done it recently yeah. and it comes right to this page and you can click on whatever you want to do. You can even read a sample. You can read a sample chapters available there. A listing of all of our events is updated uh, mm -hmm. regularly to show mm -hmm. the places we're going to be as also as well as it it shows uh, all of those events that we've done uh, with uh, shelters and in libraries yeah. and bookstores over the last year and a half. But uh, they can also, I, I should mention, if they order a book from uh, DuffyTheDog.com, uh -huh. if they, uh, we've decided if you put in the, at checkout the code uh, cable for the cable oh, channel okay. we're doing today, they yes. can get 20% off. So that's a, really? uh, a great way to that's huge. order the book. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's available oh, through that website. Uh, both local bookstores, as I said, uh, Valley and Stillwater, uh, yes. Chapter 2 right here in Hudson, mm -hmm. uh, national chains uh, carry the book. And of course, mm -hmm. if your bookstore that you have uh, where you may be in western Wisconsin mm -hmm. uh, doesn't have it, there's an ISBN number associated with the book where they can oh, go on okay. and order the book as well. Uh -huh. barnesandnoble.com, amazon.com, oh, and then just right. to mention, uh, we are in the Moore Library System that uh, oh. our Hudson Library is part of for oh, this yes. part of the state. Uh, there's copies of Duffy circulating around in the Moore Library System as well. So. Wow, that's great exposure. It sure is. And I think very easy for people to find and to get to those, so if they can't, they can always go on the website. That's right. But it's, it's very easy to do that. Um, there's, I didn't have any trouble at all. And um, that's where I got the first chapter. Terrific. Yeah, we decided early on that uh, is in setting up a website, when you're mm -hmm. asking earlier about uh, this whole process of publishing a book, you, you find out all of the things necessary, including uh, getting a website uh, mm -hmm. set up and mm -hmm. working with the technical people who can help mm -hmm. you do that, but then mm -hmm. also the design of it. And we decided early on that, uh, especially with a dog's voice, it would be good to let uh, readers sample it. And so they're able to oh, yes. read the first chapter online and also find out the events and see a picture of the uh, of the star of the show. Uh, I always like to say Duffy was very photogenic, as you can oh, see. Oh, yes. Here, so. Yes, I do agree with you. <laughs> I think you you definitely got just a star there. So this is wonderful because it's just promoting him and how he can live on. Well, that was the idea. Let him <laughs> him live on beyond his life on Earth. So. And, and I should ask you, how much does the book cost? The book retails for $22.95. 
Okay. But as I said, uh, one way uh, is to get it through the uh, oh. website at a 20% discount. That's so. huge. Mm -hmm. And then I do believe the FIPS gives a discount to members. Yes, they do. For the mm -hmm. Gift by the Hand show. And I usually do go there every year, and I think the members do enjoy that discount. I'm sure they do. So, Appreciate And I want to mention that because with the holidays coming, I think this would be a wonderful gift. Absolutely. I mean, for... A and child we, and right on up, like you we, say. We found that, Bobby, that uh, it's, it is a gift book. I'm uh, interested that you happen to pick mm -hmm. up on that, right? I think anyone who literally oh, yes. picks up the book, uh, I don't know if I would have called that a surprise, as we were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. working with these kids, but uh, it's, it's got a feel to it, the book, with the way it was designed and the beautiful cover that oh, was uh, yes. designed for the book that... Uh, people gravitate towards it, and we found that to be the case, that unlike maybe uh, a, a, what I will call a novel uh, written right. in a person's voice, right. where, gee, a person buys one copy and then passes it on or circulates it. Right. We've had any number of cases, especially around holiday periods, where someone comes to the bookstore and walks out with multiple copies because they they want it for this yes. person, that person. And of course, as you know, very often, of course, it goes to a dog lover. As I've well, yes. signed the books over uh, the past year, uh, I have to say, uh, I'll sometimes uh, be signing them in memory of a dog oh, that's been lost. That's very special. Other times in honor of their current dog at home. Yes. But invariably, when I inscribe, put a personal inscription on the book, uh, there's a dog involved. Oh, yes. Definitely. Now, I see you've gotten some kind of award here. What is this? Yes, Jerry? we did. That was uh, just a thrill to receive that. That uh, was called the Next Generation uh, Indie Book Awards. And Duffy was a finalist in oh. uh, one of the uh, categories mm -hmm. for uh, uh, pets in the uh, Next Gen Indie Awards. We had a thrill of going to New York when the oh, awards my. were presented for that yes. uh, book. So uh, it's just, it, it's really a, a neat experience for me as well as my wife to, uh, to, to go off to New York and have, it, you said earlier, having Duffy live on to yeah. think that he was there with us in oh, spirit. My. And, uh, and so, yes, we've, uh, we see, received a number of accolades and something of that sort that you can literally put as a sticker and, and show wow. people that this is, uh, uh, received some very uh, good publicity has been uh, a very nice uh, outcome from this process. Well, just you, what, it's been out a year and a half? It has, just about a well, year Well, that's and a half. just amazing. Yes, it has been. And uh, you've uh, already won that award, and, you know, I can't believe all the promotion you've done and are doing for it, and I just think it's obviously going to be a top book. I mean, everybody's going to really enjoy it and I hope that we've you know talking about it today will inspire people to read it and buy it and maybe even go down to some of these these events we talked about today. Well thank you and I just in in closing I, I'd like to say that I totally agree I hope it inspires many of the readers in this part of the state to pick it up and uh, and want to uh, read it. But I also hope coming back to the kids one last time that uh, mm -hmm. having written this and uh, them getting involved in reading it, it inspires them to continue with their writing and, and their love not only of writing but of reading as well. So, well. But I appreciate the opportunity to do this. Well, if this can open the key to reading for a lot of those children out there, that's another benefit. Absolutely. And Gary, I've just enjoyed talking to you so much well, thank you. and learning about the book and learning more and more. And I'm just inspired to read Great. more of just from this excerpts and the way you, you described it. So I hope that our audience enjoyed it and I hope that they will definitely check it out. And I know the holidays are coming. And I'm starting to think about that myself. So we hope you enjoyed the show today. And again, I want to thank Gary for being on the show. Thank you.